Good evening. Thank you for having me. So the scene you see here before you is all too common around the world. It is estimated that about a truckload, a garbage truckload of plastic enters the ocean every minute, amounting to 13 million metric tons of plastic entering the ocean every year. So plastic in the ocean harms marine life. A recent report by the Convention on Biological Diversity highlighted that over 800 marine and coastal species are impacted by ocean plastic through entanglement, ingestion, and impacts to their habitats. Plastic in the ocean also takes a toll on people and society. It affects fisheries, tourism, and shipping at an estimated cost of 13 billion US dollars per year. And we are yet to understand fully the impacts on human health. Luckily, a nearly daily and global coverage of the impacts and the responses by governments and industry, as well as new scientific research, is shining a bright light on the growing concerns of this issue and has raised public awareness. So how did we get here? Of the 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic ever produced, only about 7% has been recycled. Of the 60% that has been discarded, some of it has ended up in polluting our environment. Ocean plastics is expected to nearly double in the next five years. So my organization, the Pew Charitable Trusts, is undertaking a two-year initiative to develop a global roadmap to try and help solve the global ocean plastic problem. We aim to provide the evidence base for identifying politically and economically feasible strategies and pathways. We are conducting a global economic analysis um, to make business as usual projections to evaluate the potential effectiveness of different solutions and to analyze various scenarios for getting toward near zero plastic into the ocean. We are partnering with several institutions uh, to help solve this problem. Uh, our key partner uh, is Systemic. Uh, we are also partnering with four thought partners, the University of Oxford, the University of Leeds, and two UK-based UK NGOs, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and Common Seas. We also have the pleasure of working with an amazing team of 17 global experts to advise the work. Collectively, their expertise spans the entire plastic value chain and experience around the globe, as well as academia, business, and the nonprofit sector. So the key question that all of us working collectively are trying to answer is what is the amount of plastic entering the ocean under business as usual and various scenarios to 2040, as well as what are some of the associated socioeconomic and environmental implications of each scenario. Together with our partners and our expert panel, we have mapped the key stocks and flows of the entire plastic value chain from production and consumption to where plastic waste ultimately ends up, such as being recycled, being disposed, and unfortunately, being unmanaged and polluting our oceans. So at the end of the day, plastic use and waste management depend on local conditions. So while our analysis is global overall, we divided the world into eight geographic archetypes based on World Bank income classifications and UN population data so that we can better capture um, differences among geographies. We also focused our analysis on the predominant sources of plastic that end up in the ocean, namely municipal solid waste and primary microplastics. So how plastic is treated at the end of its life depends on its type. So we further divided our analysis into three plastic types based on its form and composition. So putting it all together, we are analyzing six scenarios. The first is business as usual. The second is how much can current commitments by governments and industry reduce plastic pollution. 
And in terms of strategies for managing plastic waste, we also analyzed a landfill-focused scenario. We are analyzing as well a scenario on how to uh, analyze the maximum effectiveness of recycling plastics. And on the pre-consumer end, we are also focusing one of our scenarios on maximizing the reduction of plastic use and substitution to other materials. And lastly, we model the scenario that brought it all together. We are also assessing quantitatively where possible and qualitatively the associated greenhouse gas emissions, the costs, and the impacts on jobs and human health to better understand the cost and benefits of different strategies that have been proposed. We are near the end uh, phase of our work, uh, wrapping up our analysis. We look forward to sharing with you our work um, in early 2020 and to making all of it public through a report and a scientific publication. Our aim is to inform policy as well as spur further research. For example, we aim to identify areas of the plastic system where actions and solutions can be most effective at curbing ocean plastic pollution. We hope our results can inform future government policies as well as business strategies. We also aim to identify solutions for different geographies such that we can help governments and industry focus their interventions on maximizing the effectiveness of limited government funding as well as investment dollars. We hope to accelerate change and get the biggest bang for the buck. So when this is all done, we hope to combine our economic analysis with a global policy analysis that we are conducting with Duke University and Common Seas to develop the global roadmap to help end ocean plastic pollution. We look forward to working with many of you in the near future on this collective effort. Thank you.